And then the Beri Chime is said usually by the rabbi, by the rabbi but called Hokkahal joins anyways by themselves, you know, and Belahash. And uh, we make a, a melody, a little melody out of Ashrei Amshka Chaloa. Right, yeah. You heard it there that they make Did it. You see that you? Yes, we've uh, we've more or less standardized that melody in the last uh, fifteen or twenty years. Ashri Ham Shikhalu Ashri. And the Kahal repeats it. Then he continues. Just join me. The whole God welcomes the Sefer Torah. And they just say that to, uh, to themselves? Yes. Not, not, no more. Not, not the melody like this. They just... <coughs> now, because you had said that that melody became standardized 15 or so years ago. Last 15 or 20 years ago. Before that... We didn't have that melody. We didn't use it. Well, do you know where that melody comes As a matter of fact, I think, uh, yes, that melody, uh, Cantor El Nadaf in first introduced it, to my knowledge, here. And he's the Chazan Hazan He He's no longer the Hazan Hazan He used to be. Oh, he used to be. Okay. Yes. He's, he's, no, he's not a, he's not uh, he's not a Hazan for a Kahila now at present anymore. <coughs> so do you know what was done before him? Yes. Let's see before that see if I can remember now. They used to just uh, just say it just it didn't have a melody. Get the Lord on a team, Rome Mashimo Yahda. Then the God had used to kick the whole car, used to take it over from Marukaba, it's not a don't know. Yes, she's a mushy, lift me, Bene Israel, Torasifal and Mushi, Norashakila, 
يعقوب عيش حين وحزيك باب ذو مقيامة وشار دير أخي هذا الخنوع يخون تموت يا شلوم شلوم راب شلوم راب لو بيت ولا تخيم إلا مشور أضلاع وزعميتين أضلاع يباريخ يتعمو بشالوم كده كحطوم لا تاتي نخيم تراتي هل تعزوبو أضلاع حفيز مع تلو يغدي التراب يا دير توسد مور لسن السبع ميلودي ويلكمينغ دي التراب I used to read the whole portion here, Rome Mu, but more or less in reading, more or less in that repetitious way. Yes. They still do say this after the Hazan finishes the delivery of uh, that portion that we said before. Okay. Is there any reason why the other tune was standardized? No, it was accepted. It was nice. It's a nice melody. It was standardized, and that was it's used now. Do you know where uh, it's uh, start? No, no. I don't. And then you have the Kriyat Sefer Torah, as uh, you see. Right. After that, we say Ashrei, and Yim uh, Loch is when we're returning the Sefer Torah to the Ark. And we use a couple of different melodies. Yim lo chadonai le'olam Elo ha'ich siyon Le'dor v'dor Hallelujah Yim lo chadonai le'olam Elo ha'ich siyon Le'dor v'dor Hallelujah Say, Mizmur le'david ha'bul Adonai Bene edim ha'bul Adonai Hod v'oz ha'bul Adonai Kibot shemosh ha'bul Adonai Be'adrat kodesh Bol Adonai Alamai L'kavod e'im Adonai That's just a melody that's more or less repetitious They finish the whole Mizmur um, and this is all said jointly. The whole Kahal says this. And you said that there are also other uh, melodies from the Lach. Yes. Um, yes, there's another one that's it. Yim Lach Adonai Le'ola Eloi Yitzion Le'dor V'dor Hallelujah Yim Lach Adonai Le'ola no, I don't. They sound to me westernized. Yeah. And uh, so I really don't know where you know where the origin of it is. Do you remember maybe when you were younger singing other melodies? Yeah, there is another one which, uh, yeah. There is. I don't recall them now, but there is. There is one or two others, but they're not popular, so they're not. Uh, see, as a matter of fact, I use mostly just this one. I think the last one that I just said. Right, just the one I. Uh, you heard over yeah, there, yeah. yes. But sometimes when somebody gets into their head and they start, this is because this generally, you know, just one of the car gets up and they start it. It's a hazan supposed to do it, but since it's a joint melody, everybody does it. So whichever melody they start, everybody just falls in and follows suit. Right. And after that, as I said, they have the Tefillat Musaf. It's uh, just simple. There's no m melody except the Keter, which right. again, they make some sort of whatever. And they don't, now the Musaf, they do not say it in the same Makhan that they said the Shahrit. Okay. Okay. They'll change uh, whatever the, uh, the feeling of the Hazan is. Very often they say it in, well, in Nahwand or sometimes Ajam. 
sometimes you're a seeker. But it depends on whatever the Hazan feels like. And the uh, and the Keter, very often they use uh, Western uh, melodies, Israeli mm. melodies. Uh, uh, they use uh, quite a variety of melodies for them. This Keter uh, What is that? That's an Israeli song. Adonai And usually when they're in a hurry, there's a couple of snappy ones which I just do it very much in a hurry. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's in order just to still give the ha'ara of a special day, and they're in a hurry, so they do it. And many who don't know don't know any of these, they'll hit on one latch on one or two of these very snappy. They do them all together. Mm-hmm. Any other snappy ones? Get there, you tell me, 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 you tell And that's it. Right. Okay. Um, Could I possibly ask you? I mean, I I think we've really done a lot today, and I don't want to take up much more of your time. Um, But I remember hearing Halal. I was just wondering maybe if you could maybe sing some of the melodies from Halal for me. The Halal, it depends on what maqam they're saying, the Halal. And then we have the last so what, what, four what, pesukim. What kind of, what, excuse me, what maqam is Halal usually said in? Whatever maqam it feels like. There's no set maqam. There's no set maqam. Okay. I guess the one melody that really stuck out to me was um, the one that went, well, I mean, it was... I think it started earlier, but I remember it to the words, you know. Even that's that's it. Now this, did they sing the whole in my circle they said Muslim. This is all repetitious, it's all the same. 
we don't do this all the time because it takes much longer for the whole Kahal to say this. Sometimes, and, and, it, and then, say, and, uh, so they either finish or they haki anitani in the same way, but usually the more proficient Hazan will not. When he reaches the haki anitani, he wants to make another melody. Oh, <laughs> Even my soul Sometimes they finish with Anna Adonai Shana, other times they won't. They'll just say Anna Adonai Shana play. Again, it's up to the Hazan what mood he's in, the Kahal, if they're patient, and so on. Uh, usually, you know, if you get them into the mood, then they continue singing. This actually, the melodious part usually ended here. But then they're in a melodious uh, uh, mood and they want to sing, so they say, Anna Adonai Yoshi Anna. Anna Adonai Yoshi Anna. Anna Adonai Yosli Hana. Anna Adonai Yosli Hana. Mm-hmm. Then I think that they went back to They finished the whole Yeah, I mean, it's a very, very beautiful melody. Yeah. You like it? Yeah. But do you know where that one comes from? Or? No. That's just a well, long ago. We don't, we don't know where it starts from. That's another question I had is in terms of you know, how old is, is the tradition in terms of, of all these melodies? And hundreds of years. Hundreds, literally hundreds of centuries. Uh, we have the Monim books. I have one which is probably... Well, this this Pismon book that we have now, much of it is what? 70 years old. And uh, the ones of Hacham uh, Adais Tabush, those would be a hundred or so years old. They have, I have other Pismanim books, Ketivat Yad, which are probably the century before that. So it's a very old tradition. I mean, it goes way back centuries. Uh, you know, like for example, I still sing songs now that are about a hundred years old. Some of these melodies, especially the lighter ones, they're maybe 150, 200 years old, which are used today. And they were redone lately by other Arabic singers, uh, much in the same form, and they've been renewed. And they're popular. I remember some of these songs my mother, Ali Hashem, used to sing them. Hmm. So you remember the, most of these tunes as a little as a boy? Right? Many of them I remember as a little Did boy. Did you grow up here in, in New York? I was born here. Oh, you're born here? Oh, okay. Yes. It's, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful, really, way of uh, delivering a stifillah. It's very moving. And. You know, like everything else, you take it for, we take it for granted with us. Yeah. We just grew with it. It's taken for granted. It's not that, oh, it's taken too long. That's enough. And so on. <laughs> same thing happens in the Ashkenazi. Yeah. 
Yeah, he takes too long to pray. <laughs> it's true, but you're right. It, it is. It is very beautiful. I really sense. Uh, now we've been to services for a little while. I really sense something very, very different. It is. It's very unique. There are many other Sephardi types of prayers, but uh, none of them are like ours, the Halabi ones. And uh, of course, I'm partial, and, but no, from an aesthetic point of view, from a musical point of view, the Halabi is, a, I think, is really the most beautiful prayers in this Sephardic world. Because also many of the other Sephardim were uh, intermixed with whatever other culture mm-hmm. surrounded it. For example, if they were in, in 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 Yemen, they had much of that culture that they picked up. If they were in Greece, or they were in other areas where the Sephardim comes from, so they picked up some of that. And the Halabi naturally is restricted to the Halabi uh, type to that uh, culture. So, but we've discussed, I guess, to a certain extent, that there are some Western melodies right, yes. that are, yes. but they're not many, is what you said, right? Um, a few, two or three percent, four percent. Yeah, a few, not many. So, why do you think it is that they've been able to stick with Halevi, Halevi tunes, where oh, first, of all, first of all, because we ourselves are very much together, the Halevi people and the now you talk Halabi, you talk people from Egypt, they, most of them came from Halab, and many of them rather came from Halab, if not most of them. Uh, uh, the people that come from other Beirut, this is close enough to Halab, or from Damascus, which is close enough to Halab. Uh, so all of these groups, they had the same background, the same culture. And we are very, very what can I say, clannish, we're very closely knit. So uh, we are able to perpetuate it because of our closeness. So if, if I, for example, were to ask the answer, would I hear many of the same melodies? Yes. You would. See, then, of course, you have to, it's depending on the hazan that they have. Right now, the hazan, you pick particularly a hayezer. The hazan of a is an Israeli. Mayor Levy? Mayor Levy. He's an Israeli. And much, he had to pick up from here, from us, much of that uh, that type of melody, that traditional melodies that we have, because he basically is an Israeli. Right. Now you talked before when we met in, in, uh, at your home in Deal. Is this being recorded? Yeah. Mm-hmm. When we turn it on? Is that right? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to talk about the other Hazanim yeah. on, on, on yeah. the record. So the, the, the singer has certain freedoms that Achazan yeah, doesn't. As a singer, just to sing, you know, not tefillah, uh, he has other freedoms that he could use in developing his music and his taste and his feeling. Uh, well, well, in the tefillot, he is a little limited. He cannot be as free. Of course, he has to develop music and he has to elaborate on it, but it is a little more restricted. And to, uh, to me, the the, uh, the uh, proficient Hazan, the melody that he is using has to more or less fit the words that he is saying in the tefillah. I mean, whether if it's praises, it has to sound like praises, and if it's if it's uh, prayers and beseeching, it has to sound like beseeching, and so on. This is the artistry of the main body. I'm not talking about the fixed melodies, the little melodies that everybody sings together. The body of the uh, prayer of the tefillah itself has to be, I mean, if there's tehanna, it has to be in the tehanunim. If there's a, uh, giving uh, thanks, it has to be in a thankful way. And there's a way and to express that musically, melodiously. This is the artistry of the hazanut. That, uh, I, uh, I guess, I, I mean, some of my, we sort of touched on this in terms of like how old the, the tradition is. Um, is. Are there any other ways you can think of finding, or any other people who might know in terms of uh, how old things are? 
No, because whatever records we have uh, are available to us, and that's it. But I, I have to, uh, the Halabi Jewish settlement in Halab goes way back, as you probably know. As I've told you that before, it goes back. They say the great synagogue in Halab was built during the uh, times of King David by your Ab ben Seruya, and that is at his instructions. That was Aram Sobat, that was part of the kingdom of Israel when, when King David uh, was, uh, you know, had control. And uh, it was an Arab, there was Arab influence there, I imagine, who knows historically, how far back. I really don't, can't say accurately, but I would imagine many centuries. Well, in the modern world, as we know, it, you know, history as we know right now, it might be 12, 13, 1500 years, the Arab countries occupying those places, although they claim they were there before. But who knows what kind of uh, culture existed at that really? time? I don't. I'm sure there are some history books that will probably give you that background, but that's not my specialty. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I thank you for today. I mean, we really, yeah, right, right. really, really did a lot of. Testing. Meeting with Mo Towell today, October 5th, 19, excuse me, October 6th, 1991. I met him at his house at approximately 12.30. I arrived a little bit late. He, uh, when I walked in, to my left, as I looked inside his home, I saw that he was sleeping. I knocked a few times and rang the doorbell, and he finally awoke. Um, as we got started, we uh, he asked me what it is I was interested in, and I told him learning about Makamat. I felt overall through the experience that um, it basically went very well. We did uh, a lot. Uh, he did a lot of singing. I found that he did not want to sing through a whole section of music that he just gave me two or three lines and they sort of indicated to me uh, when the congregation would respond and in addition to that he also indicated to me when different um, things uh, repeated and he didn't want to go on any further. Um, I felt a little frustrated by this but I certainly understand. I think through this experience something I'm currently reflecting on is that I really need to keep focusing in on what it is that I specifically need and think very hard about how I can get that from him and what I can get from other people. The first question on Arabic music, he said that on Shabbat and Yom Tov melodies um, are taken from Pismonim, but it's not limited to that. And a small percent, he said two, three, four, five percent is really taken from Western music. He said that a Chazan starts at Baruch Shehamar, it's um, and this Baruch Shehamar, um, he says the words Hashem Melech, um, and that's the 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 line where it's Hashem Melech, Hashem Imloch, and so on. It's said two times and it's repeated. He said that one particular thing that happens is that the same melody could be used twice by the Chazan or could be changed. Um, now, what happens after that is that they then move into formerly Pazuki de Zimra. Um, the Chazan does not, from what I've seen at Bet Torah, continue, but rather some other person continues. And he says someone of a of a lesser stature, that the higher, in, in terms of the hierarchy, the main Chazan really starts at Shacharit. Um, at Nishmat, as he said, just to reiterate, the formal Chazan starts. For Hashem Elech, he establishes the Makam, and then what happens is uh, is that the um, uh, uh, he then continues that with Nishmat. Now with one thing I need to check into is exactly where is Hashem Melech. With Baruch Shehamar, which in the um, Aram Tsoba 1985 edition, which is the edition that I used throughout this particular interview, It starts on page 229. After Baruch Shahmar is said, there's a certain brachot that is said, 
and that um, makam is the makam that will be used for singing the zmirat, and I presume assume that that is pezukit zimra. The reason for using different makamat to not use the same makat, makamat from nishmat and, and for the zmirat is, he said, is to have some variety and not to overdo the use of the same makam. The Baruch Shamar starts on 2.29 in this edition of the Sudur. The provision to Hassan says, Hashem Melech, within the makam that's going to be used, and he always stressed the key is to give variety. The first song that he sung was Baruch Shemar, which is page 229. He said it was from Makam Bayat. The second song, he then basically discussed how everything was sung through based upon the Makam that was set in Baruch Shemar until Hallelujah, Psalm 150 on page 236. And that um, was also something that was uh, sung by the congregation. We basically dealt with Na'awand. Now it's interesting that Baruch Shemar he sang in Bayat, he said it was Bayat. Hallelujah, he said, is Na'awand. Um, we then continued with, I believe, a second melody for Hallelujah that was also Na'awand, but it was a different melody. He said it was a special melody that was used for a different occasion. I noticed when he sang this one, that he kept time with his foot, with his left foot and his right hand. I was sitting to his right. He then also said that the Mizmorim were often said by different individuals. On page 237, he said Sika was used, uh, and sometimes um, uh, it may vary. He said that he sometimes uses Hijaz. On page 238, with the Tamim, for Vayushav Hashem, which was in Siga, page 238. I believe this led into Az Yashir. The Hazan formally starts, um, I think it's page 240, with Ki Kila Hashem. On page 5, excuse me, the fifth example that he sung. He said he started and ended with Siga, but added other things also in Bayat. I'm not exactly sure. We'll have to check the notes specifically for this. The next thing that he sa sung was also not a one. I've written down here Tova L and there was a certain part that was quicker. I remember that in this particular section he did sing something and it went basically pretty slow. I believe this is right around the time of the Baruch Hu, shortly after Baruch Hu, and oh I see what the notes say. It says that he sang through Tova El and then after that um, things were quicker. Again, we'll check specifically to know what was going on there. Then he said that part was sung through until the part that I had just recently recognized, uh, uh, Shnatat Enayim, which he sang in Bayat. We then went on to sing, uh, he said the Hazan continues, and on seven, the congregation sings El Hahodaot. And number eight, uh, a thing he sung was the Kaddish, on page 244. He sang it by memory. This was the section that that led into the Baruch, of course, because the Kaddish precedes the Baruch. Check on what I meant beforehand. Here he used something that he called Bayat Suri, which he said was rarely used as a Makam. The part that is sung for on um, El Adon, Smachim uh, Bitsarotam, he sang in Bayat, and he said that the key thing was was to lead people up to being able to sing, and that was one of the purposes of a chazan, because that really helped a great deal in terms of uh, a chazan really knowing what was the important, what was basically the important thing to do is uh, to provide interest for the kahal 
and to encourage them to sing along. He said this basically takes up most of the singing until uh, you get to the, the Shema. Some sing another part. Uh, La'el Asher I have here on page 247. He said others sing something on page 248. He says that one needs to touch on Siga before the Shema so they can come back to understanding what the Shema is. Then on page 253, right before Micha Mocha, there is a section, Mimitz Rhyme, which is also sung. He sang that. That was example 10. Example 11 was the Kedusha, and he sang the first melody that was there. Number 12, the 12th thing that was sung, uh, was in taking out the Torah, Atahareta, and then after that, he sang Ashrei Ha'am, and he said this melody, this is on page 268, he said this melody has been used for the last 15 years. It was instituted by Cantor al-Nadav, uh, and um, uh, he said then this melody was accepted. There are others that are sung um, it's through the carrying out of the Sefer Torah, and it's interesting that sort of more like a just a reciting melody, and he said a lot of people sing that reciting melody from the point through which the Roman Mu section takes them today. Um, the next thing that he sung was Yimloch, um, and he sang two melodies for Yimloch, and he said they sounded Western to him. And then um, Musaf, he said, was not in the mode of shachar, Shacharit. He said one could use Nawan, Agam, Siga, whatever he feels like. For Keter, um, this is in the Musaf Amidah um, for the repetition of the Kedusha. He said that some use Western melodies, some Israeli. He sang uh, one that he felt was Israeli, and then two that he referred to as being snappy. Then we talked about Hallel, and he sang the tune I Know through Min HaMetzai. Um, I asked him several times about different melodies that came from Pismonim, and that would be something to check on to see which melodies come from which Pismonim. The next um, thing we were talking about, about was how all the tradition is, and he kept interestingly talking about the Pismonim books and how all the different Pismonim books are, and he says some of the Pismonim books that he has come, uh, were used or known or around the time of Chacham Tabush which is the big Pismonim person that Kay uh, and I had talked about. He talked about it being a very, very old tradition. And he says that there are many ways to deliver tefillah, but the main way was really one of real true expression. Uh, he felt that, um, that the Halab tradition was the most beautiful prayers in the Sephardic world, other cultures have picked up from other elements around them. The Halevim are really tied to their culture. He said that the, uh, the, the, the Syrians who are in Israel um, are, um, are taking from the other people around them, such as from France, Spain, Yemen, he said Russia, Europe. Uh, and Moroccan. He said he went on Shavuot to Israel and in Tel Aviv near the Hilton Hotel there was a Syrian minion and he prayed and he said that everybody liked it and everybody knows of him. He says that Yehezkel of Bet Torah is Moroccan. He may possibly be Iraqi. He says many are Iraqi um, which would explain a, a deep love for Arabic music. And he said that Yehezkel he had um, uh, trained and helped a few years ago. He says, Nahari, he heard as a young boy, he's actually Yemenite, born in Israel. Yehezkel, um, uh, he said he engaged for the holidays five or six years ago for the Yemeni Narayim because Nahari couldn't commit. He heard Nahari and Nahari's father put Mo in charge over him, which would explain Mo's personal interest in him and real true connection to him. He said Nahari was in England, all of this of course I have heard before, um, and he said that he had, uh, Nahari had a real great feeling for singing, which he felt was very rare. 
He then talked about the difference between a singer and a chazan, that the difference between a singer and a chazan was that a singer feels a sense of freedom to do many things, um, which one cannot do as a chazan. And the melody really truly has to fit the words, and there's a true need for expression. We then talked about what to focus on, and he said there are three main, what he called the crowns of the chazan, that was the nishmat, the kaddish, and the kedusha. And he said, of course, anybody could sing the fixed melodies, but really uh, the supreme piece uh, was the Kaddish in terms of really truly expressing that Kaddish. Um, the, it's more difficult to help have that very spontaneous experience, that spontaneous feeling, I think, of music being created, that creative process, the recreating process within the music. He then talked about all the music and the people that, that he um, admired, such as um, Jeanette MacDonald and the many other singers. Um, and he said that he likes opera, but that opera is something that he really uh, doesn't know a great deal about, but really, truly, I think, uh, respects those that, that do it and felt the same thing was really true of being a chazan, that one really needs to have that, that true love of feeling uh, something very passionately and being able to express that. He talked about Nahari on Erev Shabbat coming up to uh, Mo and asking him to grade him, and he told him that there are certain notes that he holds too long and that during tefillah you cannot hold a note very long. And he said that Nahari um, is a real aficionado and sometimes he gets a little bit carried away. He said for the last 15 years at Mogan David they've been trying to, to teach kids um, how to read Torah but some are very monotonous and he really tries to uh, get them to uh, elaborate and do different things. And he says when he um, reads Torah, it's a real piece of art. That's a very important word, that sense of a piece of art, because he really feels, I think, very proud of it. He said that people say, when you sing a long time, do you get tired? He says no. He referred to one time for Yom Kippur when he sang with his brothers, and he says when it came to Ne'ilah, they didn't feel weaker, they felt stronger. They got stronger and stronger as time went on. And he also referred to the aspect of having the music within you. That to really train a hazan was really a matter of really having some, having that music within one, and then of course getting that music out, out of oneself.